Hi guys, this is Donna with Love Rocks, and I figured we would do one more St. Patty's Day gnome. Um, I want to thank everybody who has come to our channel and subscribed. If you haven't already done that, please do. It really helps us to get our channel out there so that we can make more videos. And if you want to be in the drawing, you have to subscribe and leave a comment in order to be in the drawing. The drawing should be done about 48 hours after this video comes out. So let's get started. This is our last gnome for St. Patty's Day. I wanted to do one more. Um, they're just such cute little guys. I wanted to do one more that uh, was a little bit different than the first one. So I went ahead and put a gold horseshoe in his hand. And so let's get started. Uh, I started off, of course, with his hat um, and made it uh, green. And I should have put all the colors in. Um, you should be able to see those as I'm going through the painting. Um, of course, I did all my shading. And uh, with this being such a light colored rock, I was a little bit afraid to put too much of the dark on the entire hat and then come back with the highlights like I normally do. It's a pretty dark green. So instead, I just went ahead and put the darker green in where all of the sh or yeah, where all the shading is going to be and then came in with a lighter green and put where all of the highlights would be. You'll see after I go through the hat a ways and start on the face that I come back and I put even more of a highlight on that hat it just it wasn't popping out quite as much as I wanted it to so I'll lighten that up a little bit more with um, with some highlights so that's what's great about doing rocks is that as you go you you can always add some subtract some um, if you find yourself in a position where you have worked a rock a little too much you've put paint on top of paint on top of paint you can do a couple of things um, one i suggest if you're just not getting it where you want it to be the color or the highlights or the the shading whatever it is if you're not getting where you want to be um, let it dry and then work on top of that um, if you've got too much paint because you've tried it a couple of times and you're still not getting it, you can always scrape the paint off. Um, if you're going to do that, I would not let it fully dry um, for you know days on end or anything like that. You can take something with a little sharp edge and you can usually chip away that paint within you know the first six hours after you put it on. So. As long as it's not, you know, really thick, you should be able to just paint over the top of it. I've done that. But I will tell you, until I got to a point that I did, um, really felt comfortable with the little noses and really getting the shading in there, I did do a couple of noses that were <laughs> pretty thick. And that's all I did. I, I just scraped the nose off and started over. You got to be a little more careful with these light colored rocks. Uh, because uh, they're they're a little bit porous. They're not, you know, super heavily porous, but they're a little porous. So as you're putting that dark color on, it, it will go a little bit out away from where you lie it down on the rock um, because it, it soaks down into those that porous edges of the rock there. Um, but not a lot. So uh, with that being said, you can scrape some of that paint off if you need to, and it might expand a little bit. Just be real careful when you're where you're laying that dark color on uh, with those light colored rocks. Um, with the horseshoe, uh, I will tell you, you're going to be a little disappointed when you get to the very end of the video. Um, I had a problem with my uh, video camera and um, I'm not sure what happened because I had plenty of um, plenty of battery but for some reason it it shut off so I got most of it I didn't get the very very end of the video and 
by the time I realized it, I was done with the rock. So it's not like I could go back and do it again. Um, but I think that there's enough of the video that you should be able to tell what to do um, with getting all of that in there. Uh, so anyways, we got the hat done. Uh, we'll put in that little black band. I did add some highlights to that black band. Not a lot, but I didn't want it to be flat black. I, I wanted to make sure to have a little bit of a shine to it. So I will put a little tiny bit of gray across the front and especially at the very top edge um, that shows that, you know, some light did hit it. It might not be white, but it's going to be a little shiny. It's going to be a little bit lighter. Um, as I'm looking at this afterwards, um, I guess I could have put just a tiny bit more. I, I just didn't want to give it too much of a um, presentation because I want to, I'm going to put that gold belt buckle on there um, that you know, goes with all of the St. Patrick's Day stuff. And uh, I just didn't want to take away from that belt buckle or that little buckle thing. So anyways, um, you can add as much or as little as you want. I think if I was going to do it again, I'd put a little bit more on there. I used a metallic gold. Um, gosh, you use such a small amount of that metallic gold for stuff that it's probably going to dry out before I ever use that little tiny bottle. But... That's what I used uh, for the buckle. And I do add a tiny bit of shine on the top of that buckle. And I do add a little bit of darkening um, colors to some of the gold in order to put some shading on that buckle. Um, it's, again, I, I've talked about this in my last St. Patrick's Day um, video. The buckle is so very tiny that I didn't do a ton of shading on it and highlighting, but I did attempt to put a little bit on there. Uh, I want to say that buckle is, well, it's smaller than, a, than uh, an eraser on a pencil, so it's pretty small. But we got it in there, and that's what counts. Um... I want to see what other people are doing for St. Patrick's Day. You know, I, I've, I've looked around for some other ideas, and I really, it's one of those holidays that I didn't see a whole lot. You know, basically shamrocks and uh, maybe some um, uh, rainbows and, you know, a, a little bit of the... the uh, horseshoes, but that was about it. So I kind of, I didn't do a lot for my hiding rocks. Um, I did a lot of uh, four-leaf clovers, and I did a lot of um, flowers, but that was about it for my hiding rocks. And uh, you can always get on my Facebook group and look at the stuff that we're doing there. And um, people share their rocks as well. And I, I did put some on there of things that we have hidden. Um, I'm out of rocks again. We took a trip to uh, Arizona a week ago. And I hid all of the rocks that I took with me. So I'm out of rocks again. So I've been trying to do videos, but also trying to get some, um, some rocks painted to hide again. So... Uh, hopefully I'll get caught back up before we take our next trip, um, which will probably be in March sometime. So anyways, we're moving along on this little guy and, uh, we've got, got his arms done, uh, his hat done. I, I said this in other gnome videos. I try to get the arms done. I try to get the the feet done, and I try to get the nose and the hat done before I ever start the beard. So if you're going to have an object on top of the beard, of course you're going to want that very, very last. But other than that, everything else gets put on before you put the beard on. Um, it's just easier because you're going to put those little wisps of hair um, touch, like laying over the top of the shirt and over the top of the arms and over the top of the hat and things like that. So just make sure that you, um, that you do those other things first. Um, my nose, I always use my three same colors. 
Um, it's a kind of a brown taupey color. Uh, they call it camel. And then I use a baby pink. Um, and then I add the engine red. Those three colors give you a, a pretty nice flesh color. It's pretty dark. And of course, I'll put all of that on first. I'll darken it up underneath um, the edges of the hat and up around the bottom of the nose as much as I possibly can without it going too red. And then uh, I'll go back with um, that same color but lightened with some white and I'll put my shiny spot on the top of the nose. And that's usually all I really do with the nose. Um, sometimes if the, my gnome has got a really dark beard, um, I will actually put in, like, I will circle that nose with a little bit of, um, a, a real dark gray. Um, I kind of went a light gray on this one only because I didn't want a ton of gray coming through. I really wanted more of the, the reddish orange hair coming through, um, looking more Irish than anything else. Um, I did really like having a little bit of that taupe, that tan color in the middle of that orange. It just seems to give it some more, some more depth. So uh, I did add that to it and a little bit of black, uh, just so you could see the wisps. But that was, those were the colors that I used. So, of course, just like all my other gnomes, um, I'll put in that dark color on the bottom. Sometimes it's black, sometimes it's a dark, dark gray, sometimes it's a light gray, like with this one. I figured the light gray would be the easiest. Uh, and then I'll put in some wisps of white because if, if you can see through that hair, I wanna make sure that there are some darks under there, some lights under there, that type of thing. And so we got that in, and then uh, we'll mix up the orange. Now for this little guy's orange uh, beard, I used um, some orange and a little bit of the taupe. I mixed that together, um, and I just kind of went back and forth with those two colors, um, added a tiny bit of red in there, just until I got the, the consistency and the orange color that I really wanted for, for the beard. You can put anything you want on there, and you can put any amount of that combination in order to get the color that you want. So here's a, a little tip. Um, when you're mixing a color, especially for the beard, because you're going to use a lot of paint, when you're mixing a color specific to something like this, and you're never going to mix it the same again, um, make sure you mix a large amount off to the side. Um, I'll mix up a good quarter size uh, amount of, of the colors that I'm going to put together so that my entire beard is, you know, the same color. So um, I just, I warn you, I, I've tried to go back and, and match a color using the same stuff I had sitting right there on the palette, and sometimes it can be difficult. So... Uh, if you can mix up that, that'd be good. The other thing is if you're really going to play with it, um, I'm in Texas right now and, um, we've had, believe it or not, some pretty dry air. So if, if you're going to mix that large of amount and you're really playing with the beard, it, it will dry out on your palette pretty fast. So try to keep that wet um, if you put something over it or if you try to keep it, you know, away from any of the fans. I don't think I've had a fan off in my house in, since I moved in. Um, the fans just stay going all the time. Um, or you can add a little bit of, of water. Uh, some people use thinner, uh, whatever it is, but just know that that is going to dry out faster when you put a large amount of paint on your palette at one time. Uh, just a little hint um, as you're painting. Um, so I get the darks in, I get them all in the areas that I want, and then I start putting in my, my Irish beard. Um, I really think that, like I said, you can use any color you want, but boy, is that Irish beard set off by that green. I just, I loved the way it, it turned out. 
And you're going to put that, I'm, my preference is to really make a bushy beard. Um, I like it to come out along the arms. I like it to go over the feet. I like it to be just a big bushy beard. Um, I know that some people, uh, their beards are more of a, um, a, a contained, you know, down to about the middle of their belly. I just prefer the big, heavy, bushy beards. So you do what, what you like. And um, matter of fact, if you're not sure what you like, just play with it. Do a couple of them and, and see which one you like the best. Um, that's, that's the best part of this is you can do anything you want with it. So we'll get that beard in, and I always try to get it down to the feet. I will tell you, and I wish I could give her credit, but I cannot remember who it is. Um, but one of the people that are, one of the ladies in my group uh, did one, and she put grass along its feet. And I just, you know, there are some things that um, look good with grass, and I thought he would look adorable with some grass. Um, I, I didn't want to put another shamrock or anything in there, but I just thought, you know what, he would look really cute with some grass down there. So I did put grass on this one. That's not something that I normally do, but I did put some grass on this one along his feet. And I'll, before I'm done, I'll put some little yellow flowers on it and kind of, you know, doctor it up a little bit. The thing is, when you're painting something like this, you can do a lot with the background um, but it, I don't like to take away from what I'm painting. So, um, if it was a consignment thing and the person I was doing it for wanted something specific, I would, but when I'm just doing something to really show you how to do a specific, uh, thing such as a gnome, I want that to be my focal point and I don't, doctor it up with a lot of stuff around it. So you can put anything you want on there. If I'd had a little bigger rock, you could put some shamrocks on there. You could put a rainbow in the background. You could do just about anything. So there's the beard. Um, I really like how it turned out with the, the colors. Um, again, I'll sit and play with this thing for a little while and get a little black in there and get a little of that tan colored. And then of course the orange. I just, I really like it to be wispy. Um, I would say most of the time I have to cut myself back a little bit or I'll go too far with the beard. So I just play with it until you, you get it to where you like it. Uh, okay, so I turned the, the um, camera off and I sketched out, I had to sketch over the top of all that beard, so I had to sketch it really soft, but I did it with a regular pencil. And matter of fact, I think it was a mechanical pencil. And got that in, and then I came back, and I, I, I uh, just used a real bright yellow for that. Now, once I get it in, and I get it shaded, and I get it all painted, um, this was the part that <laughs> my, my camera quit work, or stopped, and stop videoing. So um, after that, I went back and I put a few wisps of hair on the horseshoe and around the horseshoe, just so it didn't look like it was just sitting on his belly. Um, I also put his hands on there um, so you can bring the green around and uh, from the arms and get the hands there. Again, you don't want it to look like it's just sitting across his beard and just hanging out there. You want it to look like he's actually holding it. But um, I did work on getting that all put together. Uh, unfortunately, it's it's <laughs> not here for you to see, but um, I did get that done after I shaded it. So my tip for you would be to make sure that your horseshoe is exactly the way you want it. Uh, make sure that it's painted heavy enough that you can't see the beard through it. Let it dry really good. That You do want it to dry real good. Get your shading in and your highlights on it. Um, and, and just make sure that you've got it exactly the way you want it before you start putting the little wisps of beard on it. Um, it that way you don't wind up with... Uh, a mess on your hands because that is a lot of paint. We just did all the paint for the beard. Then we put all the paint for the horseshoe. You don't want to do that. Well, okay guys, here he is. And you'll see that I did put a 
couple of little flowers on each side of him. Have a great day, guys, and I hope you enjoy this. Bye now.